Back to back 50 point games for Bernard King. Jordan trying to shake off starts. Oh, what a move by Jordan! <laughs> Here's Michael at the foul line. A shot on Elo. The Converse weapon, that's the shoe, that's magic to do what he was born to do. It may be so, but that's not all. They let Isaiah play like he's ten feet tall. For the kind of moves that never fail, the weapon's the choice of Kevin McHale. The same is true for Mark McGuire. When I wear weapons, I'm on fire. But well, what can the weapons do for King? Why, well, I can do just about anything. You already know what they did for me. What? I walked away with the MVP. Michael Jordan is as stylish as they come. Irvin Johnson's style is sometimes pure magic. And Charles Barkley's is flash and brute force. They will write their styles into basketball history. If you were writing a book about basketball, the people you just saw would merit a chapter or two. But ask any basketball expert, and they'll tell you that if you're rewriting the story of basketball, the author, Larry Bird. To fully appreciate what Larry Bird accomplished in his career, you have to first fully understand what he overcame in his life. French Lick, Indiana. Population 2087 cannot be touched by interstate. Only country backroads can bring you into the second poorest region in the state, an area where the average income is just over $9,000. Possibly the greatest of all time. But growing up, Larry Bird was my favorite NBA player. Really? I yeah. did not know that. I had every T-shirt that Larry Bird had. I bought those heavy green shoes. Mm. Larry Bird was my guy. Bird wound up playing his college ball at Indiana State, leading the Sycamores to the NCAA final in 1979, losing to Michigan State and Magic Johnson. That was the start of a personal rivalry that would help propel the sport to its highest level of popularity. But Skip, if you think about yep. when Larry averaged 30 and 13, he did that without the three-point shot. And it was an unbelievable run through some very good teams, such as Arkansas, coached by Eddie Sutton, and then DePaul, Ray Meyer, and Joey Meyer's team, featuring Mark Aguirre, to get to Magic Johnson and Greg Kelser. Imagine if he'd have had a three-point shot in college, Skip. What would those numbers look like? It might have been 40 and 13. I couldn't wait to call home to tell my boys, man, this dude named Larry Bird is for real. This is the baddest white dude I've ever seen in my life. I had some friends who I kept in contact with while I was still back here at Indiana State, and uh, they never saw Indiana State or Larry Bird on TV. So because of the numbers that he would produce, um, they, they assumed that he, Larry Bird was a black player. And I thought, you know, never thought of that, but uh, they just thought that, you know, a guy can do that kind of thing as far as score and rebound and dish out the assist. That, you know, must be a black athlete. All-American, we, we, we go to the finals. He lose to, we lose to Michigan State. After the game, he tells me, Oh, I, I need to go to the boys club and I need to work out and shoot. I need to work on my game. You know, I mean, hey, we had a great year, man. What are you talking about? I'm going home and I'm going to brag. I'm not going to play any ball, you know, but that's just the difference. Larry Bird was getting buckets against brothers. And if he played today, Larry Bird would still be getting buckets against brothers. In fact, he had a level of confidence that was that was far superior to the rest of us. Who was your favorite NBA player growing up? Larry. And? <laughs> Larry Bird, Larry Bird, Larry Bird. Was he protective of his image? He didn't care. Yeah, yeah. He really didn't care. Larry Bird coming he come with jeans on. He did not care. <laughs> he didn't care. That's one that I know. He was clearly the best player. He owned the league on the basketball court. He was special. Larry Bird was LeBron James before LeBron James is LeBron James. The younger generation needs to go back in YouTube, man. Some of the stuff that that kid did, man, I shouldn't say kid, that man, that man did. It was a bad boy. I don't know if people know this, but Larry Bird is a 24-point scorer, a 10-rebound, 6 assists for a career. 
You don't want zero problems, big fella. But there's something unique about basketball and all the thought that's involved in which way you're going and the ability to explode and then the ability to, in the middle of all that, land a precision shot into a hole. There's really not another sport like that. And that in all this chaos, you got to find stillness. In all this chaos, you got to find the ability to stop and throw a perfect shot off. So it's not just inc incredible physical ability. It's incredible physical ability and then touch. Yep. It's real weird. Yeah. It's a very interesting sport in that way. It requires you to have your shit together. 28 seconds. Bird. Swap pass to Archibald. Ahead to Henderson. The bird on the cut. Down oh, but it was his unselfish all-around play which helped elevate his team that made Bird the player he was. As a rookie, he took the Celtics to the conference finals. I came in uh, to the league. You know, I, I played a, a, a small town. I, I did very well. I was wondering about the Mount Rushmore of impactful players. Like, they left, they, they left their mark. He was MVP three years in a row while only missing three regular season games and averaging 26 points, 10 rebounds, and almost seven assists per game. Let me ask you this. Best player you played against? Best guy I played against might have been, uh, you know, Larry Bird. Larry Bird could do anything. Oh, what a nice pass by Walton to Bird. He's for Bird, another three-point try. Bird kept it alive to Walton for two. Oh, what a play. To Vincent, he's got McHale, finds Bird. Oh, what a nice pass by the rookie. Two seconds on the shot clock. Bird wants a three out of it. He gets it. Uh, I missed him by one year. The year that uh, I came in, he had just retired, I think, a year and a half. But I got to play okay. against him in the Dream Team that last year of his healthy basketball. And um, I'm telling you, like, we wanted to – Going in, going into there, I wanted to see Barkley. He was my favorite player, Jordan, and Bird. It, it was, it was, it was those three by far, heads and shoulders above the rest. You know, Magic as well. But you, we wanted to see, we wanted to see Bird and to be able to practice with him, see how he worked out, see how he shot, see the junk that he talked constantly. I mean, it was like it was, you know, it was the, one of the best moments in your life because you are. When I played, Larry Bird was the only one I feared. A lot of black guys always ask me, could Larry Bird really play that good? I said, man, Larry Bird was so good, it's, it's frightening. When you could play, first of all, when, when Larry Bird sat up there and said he didn't see color, I want everybody to know, it was truly believable mm. in the black community. Yep. Everybody looked it up. Oh, we believe that because Larry Bird didn't care. You could either play or you couldn't. Is it fair for me to believe that even black fans, after a while, were, were perfectly willing to acknowledge that Larry Bird was the baddest white boy ever to shoot a basketball? No question. It's not even this. <laughs> yes. No doubt. Oh, that's easy. Okay. Oh, that's just, easy. I mean, I can tell, tell you right now, Larry Bird could walk, literally in his heyday, he could walk into any black neighborhood in America. And they'd be like, hey! Hey, that's Larry Bird. Come on over, you know, because he could ball. He could ball. I love Larry so much. I will never, ever, ever tire of hearing Larry Bird stories. Was uh, Larry Bird stories? Larry is, is such a unique personality. I don't have necessarily stories. I'm, I just, what I, what, what, challenges me is I, I, I marvel at people who think the guy is a hick. Larry is one of the smartest, pragmatic people I know. And I, and I mean, and my mother, God rest her soul, was very bright. Coach Knight is probably, Coach Knight and Bill Russell are probably the two brightest people that I know. Larry is, is, is maybe right under that, in, in that, that, that category. And when people keep talking about him being a hick, Larry understood what he understands as well as anybody is personalities and people. And that's why he would do his junk talking for, the, for airing here on radio, because he understood people who would let that bother them and what they would do when it bothered them. That's, that's the way Larry, that was his gamesmanship. Did he talk trash on the floor? Oh, definitely. But, you know, he, he always talked trash. I remember he... He just he talked trash uh, against us, talked trash with every uh, against everyone else. But you know the, the the difference is, 
he could back it up. He could back it up. You know, I remember, you know, like I was saying, growing up in Boston, people all used to always talking about that he can't jump, he can't do this, he can't do that. And, you know, a lot of my friends was like that, you know. So, I, you know, I got to the league. I called all my friends back up. I said, you know, all that trash that you were talking, you need to squash all that. This, this man is great. He can, he can, whatever you were saying for a man who can't jump, he he'll demo, he can demo, he's, he's demolishing everybody. So your your guys are saying, how can you let this guy? Oh, <laughs> he, he, he's doing it on everybody. <laughs> He's doing it on everybody. He's doing it on the best defensive players in the league. Yeah. Uh, my man Rodney Rogers, strong, fast, quick, athletic, and Bird just set him up in the corner. They, someone drives to the corner, stock and pass out the Bird, and here you see Rodney Rogers take a full sprint. And I'm talking about, you know how uh, how Zion blocked that shot a couple weeks ago? Yeah. That's where like like where Rodney Rogers came from. Except unlike the young kid that <laughs> shot the shot. <laughs> In the middle of uh, him being in the midair, uh, Bird says, welcome to the parachute club, rookie. And watches <laughs> him go by him, shoots the ball, and, like, Curry does what Bird did because he shot it and just kept walking down, like, shaking his head like, these dumb youngsters, they don't never get it. <laughs> he walked by our bench at the Salt Palace and said, I feel like 43 tonight. <laughs> And he came out, he scored 43 in the third quarter and checked checked himself out with a 20-point victory, and uh, I was fairly impressed with that yeah. one. So he just picks a random number, I feel like, hmm, 43. And he says it yeah. to, the, to, you, uh, to the bench? Yeah, yeah. It was fairly impressive, you know, especially yeah. when, he lived it, when he backed it up. Like Larry Bird was apparently just an insanely disciplined professional basketball player. He would get there and practice before everybody, stay after everybody, practice things left and right. And when they would have those three-point competitions, remember we would have those all-star three-point competitions, in the locker room he would just be like, which one of you guys is coming in second? He doesn't even take his warm-up jacket off and he just drops triples. To be that guy, first of all, you have to have a fire burning inside you like most people will never be able to comprehend. 47 points, 14 rebounds, 11 assists. He got bored and took seven left-handed shots late <laughs> in this game. First of all, he could execute under pressure. Larry Joe Bird. The most clutch player in NBA history. Ten seconds. Five and Bird has the basketball. Look out. Two seconds on the clock. Larry yes. Bird was the baddest son of a gun on the planet. Larry says, I'm going to bust off the play, and I'm just going to come out, and I'm going to shoot a three. And I'm like, we're down two. I'm like, no, don't do that. And I'm like, just, let's shoot a two, please. Go to the hole, try to get fouled. Let's just get into overtime, see if we can't win this game. And Larry says, no, nah, I'm just going to bust a three on him. And I'm like, oh, my gosh. The wonderful arrogance of a man who needs two to tie or three to win and says, let's roll the dice. Bird's the man they want to have it. Yes, indeed. Bird for three. Yes! Larry Bird for three. Celtics lead it by one. What can you say about Larry Bird? I am legend. He has so many iconic moments, game winners, and performances. Up face. Fires another three-pointer. Oh! Double fake, jumper, score! Larry Bird hits it with two seconds left. All right, here's Bird. Let's go all over, he fires. It's a three-pointer, and he's tied the game. You should have had more than one guy on me. Uh, you can't beat me. They're not going to call a foul. Goes to Bird, he's open. Got it, had it, it's a I'm talking about killer instinct. There's nobody better with a game on the line. Maybe nobody better ever. But there was just some sleepless nights. Bird takes the pop. It's gone. He shot one, and I mean, I, I'm trying to block this shot, and he, he was just telling me, Scott, you're a little too late. So we playing him in the last, the last play. 
He says uh, to James Worthy, he says, you guys don't have to worry about it. I'm going to go right over there at that corner. <laughs> He said, they're going to set a screen for me. We're taking the ball out. He said, I'm going to curl right over. And he's telling us to play. 40,000 eyes on Larry Bird because they knew he was going to get the ball. And uh, we knew it. Our opponents knew it. Now it's just up to them to stop it. He's telling us to play before they even take it out. He said, I'm going to go right over to that corner, and I'm going to catch it, and I'm going to shoot it, and I'm going to tie the game or win the game, whatever the case may be. I always thought I was confident. You know, I always thought Kevin McHale was confident. But Larry just had a different level. They take the ball out, and I think it was either Danny or or, or um, DJ, the late great DJ. Yeah, take the ball out. The man curled right to the corner, caught the shot, <laughs> shot a three. <laughs> and game over. It. <laughs> it's like, are you effing kidding me? <laughs> Bird goes for three, and the Lakers call time. You can run, but you can't hide. Game on the line, free throw, three, jump shot, whatever it was. I'll take Larry Bird any day or any night. I'm gonna get it right here. I'm gonna shoot it right in your face. Ten seconds. Money on the line. Any sort of outside shooting. Deep. Deep. Bird has the basketball. Look out. Two seconds on the clock. It was good. He knew it was good before he shot it. Had that tape on that note. That was a bad man. He was a bad Larry Bird was the truth. And then he got the ball and shot it right in his face. Yeah. And Bird says to X. I didn't mean to leave nothing on the clock. And I just looked at him and said, oh, conceited bastard. What you mad about? Larry Payton, fall away. Hits it at the buzzer. All right. He was a cold-blooded killer. He was a bad, Larry Bird was the truth. Ain't no question about that. Small game's over. Boston wins. I said, Larry, how do you make all those shots? Just like that. He said, I do all that all the time. Killer instinct, man. For real, dog. And now there's a steal by Bird. On the base of DJ, Larry. I forgot. I forgot about Larry Bird. So I run over. We we look at the bench. No timeout, nothing. So I run over and I grab the ball, playing every second. And that's what the Celtics taught us, to play every second. I throw it up. Bird sneaks in. I didn't even see him. That joker caught the ball, and in my mind, I'm like, okay, he going out of bounds. Now that's a steal by Bird. Must have stood there for about five seconds because <laughs> every, everything was going in slow motion in my mind, right? They are so in tune. They are so in sync. I mean, it wasn't, no, it wasn't no high five. It was a love thing, you know, like they, they, they hugged and embraced. And then it was, it's, it's just a strange moment. I'm like, damn, how are you doing that? <laughs> <laughs> and I'm walking to the huddle and, and they were all mentors. We, we studied them. They, they taught us everything. This is probably one of the most incredible plays that's ever happened against me and that probably I've ever witnessed. We, we, we get, we try to take the ball out of bounds or whatever. Larry walks by and he goes, they were great teachers. Not only were they great teachers, right? But they also, after they beat you, then they would school you. Larry Joe Bird was straight up rocking a uh, a mullet. Larry Joe Bird wore a, wore a mullet. <laughs> and then after that, sees to get off Paxson to Larry Bird. He scooped it in. Coming back for Boston, left corner jumper. Jerry Seasting guarded by three. Bird's foul line jumper. Ainge against Paxson. Now to Bird. Three pointer from the right. Bird pops and shoots from the right side. Jerry Seasting controls off to the right. Standing dribble at the stripe. Bird has it right of the circle. Fakes on Poquette. Gets to the lane. Fade away shot. Good. Pulls the 4 2 lead. Celtics on the attack. Bird has it right corner. He fires. Rimming. Good. Oh. Hit the top of the glass and came down through. He caught his own pass. No travel. Here's Ainge. 
Ainge feeding it inside. Bird shoots it up baseline left and hits it. Ainge between the circles, swings it left to Bird. Shoots foul line. Good. Danny Ainge between the rings. Left side is Bird against Sellers. Bird baseline left. Backs in on Sellers. Fade away shot left baseline is in. Bird's got 18. Danny Ainge spinning and a bounce pass ahead to Bird. Bird's pull up shot right of the lane is in. Right side is Bird. Bird right of the circle. Feeds it off right baseline to Seasting, who fell down. Sellers didn't react to the ball. Bird in the lane. Feeds Kite for the dunk. Bird backs in. Low left behind the back pass to McHale underneath. He lays it in and draws the foul. Some pass by Larry Bird. Ainge plays it into Bird. Low right. Fade away shot. Bird rimming. Good. Here's Bird. Low right in on Jordan. Shot is in. Larry Bird with 26. Ainge has picked it up into Bird. Low right. Jordan. Bird's got 32 right now. Boston leads by two. The next one is in. 33 for Bird. Bird pops out, shoots it up right of the lane, right through. 37 for Bird. Shoots out of the corner. Yep. 41 for Bird. Boston by 11. Doug Collins takes time. My first year, I'm, I'm excited. I'm playing against Larry Bird. I go shake his hand. He wouldn't shake my hand. Back then, guys just wouldn't shake your hand. Wouldn't shake my hand. He would look at me and just nod, right? And I was like, well, maybe he's just getting into the game. Disguise can hide the identity of the Celtics' inspirational leader. What was the best trash talk Bird ever said to you? And so the first time I'm gone, he said, "You don't even belong in this league." He shoots a three. Wham! Larry Bird in the corner for three, and that's how we start this one. I said, okay. Next time he comes down, he said, I don't know why they got you guarding me. He hits another three. Speaking of a hero, Larry Bird now with 13 points. He's the game high scorer. And having one of the greatest players to ever lace a pair of shoes up in Larry Bird. Yeah. Bird working one on one against Dominique. Larry Bird and the basket counts, and there is a foul as well. Now, Dominique Wilkins has quite a, a responsibility for this ball club. They quickly double Bird, and what a shot! Just steps through the double team. Great play. He had an attitude and the heart of a lion. Rebound, Dominique with 50 seconds to go, and a steal. Bird! Here's just a heads-up play by Larry Bird. Now, another problem was that Webb did not make himself available. In a half-court situation, he was he was evil. I mean, you couldn't beat him. Hastings picked up the foul, his first. Bird, bullseye for Larry Bird. He has 15 points. Roberts moves away from the screen, and Bird hits another shot. Now the regulars are back in there. Akers and four starters, and Bird hits again. Bird fakes Rivers on the three and finds Danny Ainge with a left-handed shot inside. They got to give some help. Bird is just too hot. He's going one-on-one -on -one against Levingston and burns him again. 21 points. You don't see anybody raising a fist or clapping their hands. They're just out there playing. Bird from Johnson will limit the Celtics to one shot. Harris gets through. Passing inside by the Celtics. Bird. Bird with a fake pass and a one-hander at the baseline. Bird. Simple play. 25 for Larry Bird. Easier for him to bring the ball up. Bird now cuts free. With Bird again pulling up. Putting Boston ahead. Bird attempting to break free. Stays with it and follows. I don't know if I've been to another basketball game where two guys got red hot at the same time. You've been to games where they get hot. Right. That was different. 22 lead changes. The Celtics once were up by seven. Dominique hits a three. Lead the bird off the fake. Improves his position. And the Celtics are up again. 95 to 93. Wilkins. This is a 
type of game of who's going to blink first. Wilkins responds, and he has tied it at 101. 38 points for Wilkins. In a half-court situation, he was, he was evil. I mean, you couldn't beat him. It's Bird's turn. We had some epic battles. Comes up with a shot in the Celtics lead. And it's Bird. Now he goes into double team. And the duel continues. Wilkins responds. It's Bird's turn. Comes up with a shot in the Celtics lead. Larry Bird was the truth. Johnson gets it into Bird, and Wilkins is there. Bird comes free. Bird for the layup. He had an attitude and the heart of a lion. Another defensive stop. A must here for the Hawks. Johnson gets it into Bird, and Wilkins is there. Bird comes free. You are watching what greatness is all about. You are watching what greatness is all about. Burr was a bad somebody. Here in the fourth period, he has shown you why he's a future Hall of Famer. 20 points this quarter. He is 9 of 10. Larry Joe Bird. Guaranteed a win in number seven, saying the Hawks blew their chance by losing number six. Now he'll take it for the two first and hope to draw the foul, taps it back in, and they stay off it. And having one of the greatest players to ever lace a pair of shoes up in Larry Bird. Yeah. Open man's age. And he was fouled. And the Atlanta Hawks bench can't believe it. The Boston Celtics will win this series. 46 points this afternoon. The miss, that's it. Yeah, Bird said after that game, Yeah. as we walking off the court, he said, you know, we both deserve to win this game. Unfortunately, yeah. one of us got to go home. He said, you're a hell of a player. He was just better. Five times he led the Celtics to the NBA Finals. Three times they won, beating Houston in Bird's second season, 1981, besting the Lakers in 84, and the Rockets again in 86. Well, we've heard that before, but this roller coaster ride is intent on stopping in the garden with one more banner. The league's most valuable player for the past three seasons from the Boston Celtics, 6'9", Larry Bird. Won three straight MVPs in the league with the Showtime Lakers and Michael Jordan and the Bad Boys present. Only two other players won the regular season MVP award three consecutive times as Bird did, Bill Russell and Will Chamberlain. After winning the world championship, after being the MVP of the playoffs, MVP of the league, what an honor that is, MVP of the league. It sure is. You know, after going through a, a tough season like you do, then at the end you start bringing in awards. It's a really great feeling because yeah. you know you accomplished something. Yeah. Do you have a trophy case somewhere that you keep some of the things you cherish most? Well, I got some at home and some at my grandma's house and my friend's house some at my house. So I sort of just spread them out and everybody gets to see them. Never had a losing month during the regular season when Larry Bird was in their lineup. He was that kind of player, that kind of influence. Quiet, classy is how some describe the hick from French Lick. He became the founding member of the 50-40-90 club and he did it again the following season. 
Not even Kobe, LeBron, or Jordan accomplished that. Not even once. Larry Joe Bird. From a basket, pure basketball standpoint, what was the most fun about playing with Larry? Just as a basketball. Yeah. So this Bob this goes to your this goes to your one takeaway from John Wood. There's no one thing. It's it, it's endless. And I but the thing that the thing that really <laughs> uh, I think the thing that uh, tingled tingled my brain the most <laughs> or among the things that tingled my brain was just how darn smart that guy was and how he knew where everybody was and what they were doing at all times, on and off the court. What, what Larry was able to do on and off the court, it just, it, it defied description. And it was very much like being on tour with the Grateful Dead. He was ridiculous. He came here. <laughs> I remember our, our sportscaster played the, the Superman theme when he was talking about him that night after the game. <laughs> because he did everything. Uh, right. Points, rebounds, assists, uh, just steals, you name it. Uh, Larry has such a great mind for the game. And, uh, you know, a, a, a great touch. I, I had a lot of respect for him uh, as, as a competitor. But it was fierce. I mean, every time Larry walked on that court, man, it was fierce as could be. And so he was rolling and rocking, and the place was just jumping, and the scoreboard was bouncing. And it was an exhibition game, and I had just come from six years with Donald Sterling and the Clippers. And I'm saying, oh, my gosh. And I could hear the fans chanting, chanting. And so I go up to Larry, and I say, hey, Larry, I, I hear the fans, but I can't make it out. Are they chanting, Jerry? Jerry, Jerry, and he looked at me with this enraged look, and he said, no, they're chanting my name, and you better get used to that. And then he turned banked in a three. I mean, he was just, he was incredible. The single greatest player I ever played with, by far. The thing that, uh, that always stands out to me about Larry was his um, unwavering confidence. I mean, he had a level of confidence that was, that was far superior to the rest of us. And we was talking, you know, we may be talking, it's like, you know, white boy just lit you up. And I used to always say that, you know, like to my friends, they'd be like, yo, is Larry really that good? I used to say like, yeah, that's the baddest white boy I ever played against. <laughs> and he was one of the best, biggest trash talkers that you'll ever see in your life. <laughs> yeah, that's All right. okay. That's Larry what I want to hear about. more trash on the court than anybody. He'd tell you where he's going. He'd tell you when he catches it, there's nothing you can do about it. <laughs> He, he, he was, and it was, it was, it was great trash talking because it wasn't vulgar. I mean, he right. wasn't, you know, pounding his chest. You can just be standing next to him. You know, I would jump out and try to block a shot on rotation. And, and he'd say, face. Scott, Scott, you're not getting that. Which, why are you even jumping? Why are you say, running out here? <laughs> and it, but it don't was do all that. game. He'd say, say something like, don't do that. Yeah, don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, he, and he talked the whole game and it was, you know, after the game and after years of thinking about it, you're like, right. man, that dude. But he was, like Cap said, he was ridiculous as far as the way he played the game. Larry Bird at his best, LeBron James at his best. Oh, my God. And do we have to put the teams, too, or just individual players? If there's a draft... Oh, my God. And you can take Bird or LeBron. Oh. So let, let's say I take Larry at this age when I think he averaged 30, 10, and 7, something like that, and LeBron right now. So you got Larry Legend okay, or now LeBron. What rules, One, are we, what rules are we playing to? We're playing today's rules. <laughs> oh, I got to go with Larry Joe. I got to go with Larry Joe in today's rules. You can't yeah. touch him. Yeah. And Larry, so this is 27, 28 year old Larry and 27, 28 year old LeBron, yeah. right? Or is he 30 now, right? 30. Yeah. So 30 year old Larry, 30 year old LeBron. I, I'll take it at any age. You, you can do it at 18 or 22 or 26, 28, or as they finally concluded at age 30. Okay, give me give me Bird's stats at 30, Paul. At 30. Because that, that, that was an MVP season, I think. Yeah. Uh, wow. Uh, 30 points a game, nine rebounds, six assists two steals, and a block.
Uh, hey, can I answer that question now? Larry Joe. Yeah. <laughs> so Larry he averaged Joe. 30 back then. Yeah, he's in my top Is 10. he ahead of Larry Bird? you got Bird. a strange top 10. Hold on, is he ahead of Larry Bird? No. No, LeBron's uh, physical, if not athletic ability, is a gift. Larry's IQ and basketball uh, competitiveness is, yeah. you know, un un uncanny. Like Now, you can argue, oh, LeBron is such a superior athlete, and I will not argue back. But as an all-around basketball player, as a leader, and especially as a clutch shooting difference maker, I'm all about Larry Bird. He was a bad boy. For those of us, the, the, those in the, the audience who are just too young to know, bad boy. I can understand how some people, Larry Bird was better than most people think. And so make your argument for Bird. Bird's a better shooter. It's not close. Uh, I think Bird is as, okay, as we, good we, or we, better as a passer. We do Bird's know a better rebounder. Better shooter from LeBron at any distance. As for the outside shooting, this isn't really close. And the only reason his three-point numbers aren't gaudier is the simple fact that hardly any threes were taken back then, much less practiced. And yet Bird still shot over 40% five times, including two 50-40-90 seasons. Not only was he a near 90% shooter from the free throw line, which LeBron can never brag about, but also Larry Bird was Mr. Clutch. When the ball, when the game was on the line, you knew that the ball was going in Larry Bird's hands and there was little to nothing that you could do to stop him because he was that much of a marksman, a marksman of the highest order, one of the most lethal marksmen we've ever seen. When I go out and shoot around by myself anywhere before a game in the summer, I always try to start out about 15 foot from the basket and work my way around the perimeter just so I can get loose and then uh, maybe go a little bit further out or a little bit closer. Larry Bird. He's got him by three points in, in overall average scoring, th three rebounds a game he's got him by, which is pretty significant. Got him slightly in assists, which surprised me. Larry Bird was a better passer. And pass to Bird, behind the back to Perry! Larry Bird deserves even more credit when you look at those numbers because the game was played considerably tougher then. It was more physical. You can get up in people. You know, you had the bad boys and everybody else still in the game and being very, very relevant. We all know the, bait, the game of professional basketball in the NBA is called soft as putty right now. You pass gas, you'll get called for a foul. Yeah. You touch somebody's fingernails, you might get ejected. I agree. I mean, it's, 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 it's unbelievable. So the fact that back then it being so tougher and Larry Bird having the quality of teammates that he had in McHale and Dennis Johnson and others, to sit there and put up those kind of numbers is, a, is another testament to his greatness because he was playing in a time where they did not mind sharing the wealth, yet he was still able to register those kind of numbers. So Larry Bird deserves a whole lot of credit for that. You take Larry Joe. Larry Joe uh, <laughs> for the win. When it comes down to the end of a game in a championship series, I would rather have Larry Bird have the basketball. Whether it's a particular juncture in the season where you're trying to position yourself for the playoffs, or you're talking about the last minutes of a game, or you're talking about the last shot in a game, or you're talking about a game seven, or you're talking about anything that, that indicates clutch, you simply can't pick LeBron over Larry Bird because you can pick almost no one in NBA history over Larry Bird because he was a marksman of the highest order. When it was money time, you knew where the ball was going, and you also knew there was little to nothing that you could do about it. It was just a matter of whether or not Larry Bird was going to make it or miss it. It was not a matter of what he was going to put himself in position to do or what he was going to be capable of doing because he was that big time. In a blink, I will end your career so fast. I don't need no shooters to get your ass. I am shocked that you're not defending LeBron a little harder because I anticipated I you would. I can't. No, I agree with you. I I'm guessing that right now about 80% of our viewing audience does not agree with either one of us. Well, that, 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 all that means is that they don't know anybody. They don't know. Because we, we, we're you. giving them facts. In terms of clutch, money time, there's no, there's no contest. And, and I don't think it's even close. Now get the fuck out of here. Bye bye now. <laughs> Eat this, King. <laughs> right? <laughs> Woo! Kevin! <laughs> what? <laughs>
LeBron fans, y'all gonna hate me.
out of the blue, out of nowhere, for no apparent reason, LeBron suddenly posts an ode to Larry Bird. Look, Bird was a 6'9 forward. He could play both positions, small forward and power forward. Larry Bird, your favorite player growing up. You can go back to Glenville High School, you can go to Savannah State and ask, who was Shannon Sharp's favorite player when he was growing up? And I guarantee you, they will tell you Larry Bird. You're saying Larry Bird? We know he was good in the 80s, but he couldn't do anything today. Larry Bird today might be like uh, Ryan Anderson or something like that. I'm telling you, you kids just don't know. Oh, it's a different generation. You guys probably never so seen Larry Bird play. Which yeah. is, just how many have seen Larry Bird play? Hey, everybody's seen Larry Bird play. Right. That's, that's not a high enough percentage. We got uh, We got some work to do. So you saying, what would Larry Bird do today? Here's your answer. The same thing he did in the 1980s. Larry Bird was amazing. So before I address who was better, Bird or LeBron. I don't think people realize just how talented Larry Bird was and how great he was. He was arguably the best player in the world in the middle of the 80s when he won three straight MVP awards, joining Wilt Chamberlain and Bill Russell as the only players ever to do that. Three straight MVPs, three NBA championships. You kids just don't know. Larry Bird was a career 24, 10, and 6 guy. Larry Bird is the only player in NBA history in the top 50 in career points per game, career rebounds per game, and career assists a game. He's the only player in NBA history to average 20 points, 10 rebounds, and 5 assists for their career. Let that sink in. 24, double-digit guy. 24, 10, and 6. Skip, he could score the basketball when the three-point shot was not in bold. Obviously, yeah. Larry was a much better shooter than LeBron ever dreamed of being because even from the free throw line, Larry was almost a career 90% free throw shooter. Reggie, who's, who are your top five shooters all time? Because I look at that like, okay, Reggie, Larry, Chris Mullen, New York City guy, me in New York City. Those are my guys in that conversation. Uh, who are your top five shooters ever? Larry Bird. Larry Bird was getting buckets against brothers. And if he played today, Larry Bird would still be getting buckets against brothers. In fact, he might be even better because of the prominence of the three-point line. Skip, people don't realize this. Larry Bird attempted less than two threes per game. Currently, there are 197 players attempting at least two points at least two threes a game. Let that sink in. Larry Bird, arguably one of the greatest shooters of all time, only attempted less than two threes per game. I think Larry's a better rebounder for the simple fact, Skip. Larry guarded people that played closer to the basket than LeBron. LeBron defends guys that spend most of their time on the perimeter. So for him to average seven rebounds a game when he spends the majority of his time playing on the perimeter is pretty good. In one year, Larry averaged 11 a game, which is pretty great. All right, also, one of the best passers we've ever seen. At least as good of a passer as, yes, LeBron James, if not better. Like LeBron, his court vision was, you could say it's not unparalleled because magic too, right? But, but Bird could pass it practically like magic. And then as a passer, Larry Bird was gifted. He had that gift yeah. of seeing it before yeah. it happened. He just wasn't so much of a point guard as LeBron has often been, or point forward. And had that kind of court vision at the small forward, power forward position, but then he could shoot it a whole lot better than Magic. And by the way, Bird would average 10, 11 rebounds a year, too. Bird was as good a passer as any. If you want to say Magic Johnson's the greatest passer ever, okay, fine. Bird is right there. Yeah. But Larry, one year, averaged eight assists. So, so you can see he had the capability mm -hmm. of getting up yeah. toward 10 assists a game. Uh, yeah. And, and then let's not forget the fact. But I don't want LeBron over Bird in the last two minutes. I want to give it to Bird. I want the ball in Larry Bird's hands in the last two minutes. Killer instinct, man. Who's, who's, you know, do I want the ball in Larry Bird's hands at the end of a game? or LeBron's, uh, Larry's, Skip. every time, day or night. Killer instinct, man. For real, dog. He was one, if I'm not mistaken, Skip, he was one steal away from a quadruple double. 
He had, he had played 33 minutes, but they were blowing the team out. Casey Jones asked him, did he want to go back in the game to get a quadruple double? He said, nah, I've done enough damage tonight. Skip, who? Now, you tell me the guy, Skip, that needs one steal, one rebound, or one assist, or one point from getting a quadruple double. Plus, you think Joel Embiid talks trash? Oh my, there are players from that era that tell you he is the greatest trash talker of all time. But Skip, to have a quadruple double, he said, nah, I'm good, Holmes, I've done enough damage. What makes you want to be cocky and say something to somebody? I was uh, taught at an early age to try to get all the advantage you can. I don't know if it helps or not, but it, it makes me feel better. It gives me confidence and, and I, uh, it gets me fired up. I, I don't know if it does anything to the, to the opponent, but um, it, it does, it, it fires me up. Or when he says, you know what? I'm gonna play Portland left-handed because I'm gonna save this right one for the Lakers because we got them after Skip. He and he shot almost he every point mm -hmm. with his left hand. All everything. Left. If you don't think yeah. Larry Bird, Skip, if you don't think Larry Bird could have been great in this era, all you have to do is look at Luca. Look at what Luca's doing with at, at not the shooter, not from the field, not from the free throw line. Okay. They talk about Michael all Jordan right. might average forty. Larry Bird might average forty. Do you remember Larry Bird? He played in Michael's era. This is ahead of episodes five and six of The Last Dance. And even though LeBron didn't post this, I think LeBron is such a student of history that he knows full well. When the Celtics were at their pinnacle mm -hmm. in the early 80s, how many times did Michael Jordan Bulls beat them in the playoffs? Answer me. Michael Jordan never beat Larry Bird in a playoff game. Larry Bird's Celtics never. went 6-0 and against Michael's Bulls. I'm just, okay, never beat them. These were best of five series, first round series. Yep. And it was sweep, sweep, 3-3. Three, three. three to nothing, three to mm -hmm. nothing. So mm -hmm. I think LeBron is trying to remind everybody between the lines, subtly, uh... Everybody remember, Larry Bird was really good. In fact, it sounds like maybe LeBron's trying to make the case that even Larry Bird was better than Michael Jordan. So if Michael Jordan was the GOAT, he should have been knocking Larry Bird off that throne. Because before there was Jordan, there was magic with Bird. And there is no one who went against Bird that Bird did not strike fear in. I didn't say respect, because they're all respected. But fear. What happened the following year, Skip, in 86? 3-0 Celtic. What happened in 87, Skip? 3-0 Celtic. Why didn't the GOAT be get past the big three Celtics if he's the GOAT? Why did he get swept? Larry Bird was a bad boy. Larry Bird was the truth. But you don't knock Jordan for getting swept by the Celtics. You said he's the GOAT. Well, if your guy's the GOAT, why didn't he win? Answer me. Killer will, mental toughness, clutch, gene. Larry Bird was a bad man. Bird was a bad somebody. Took a bunch of nobodies at Indiana State all the way up the ladder of the NCAAs through March Madness to the national championship game against Magic Johnson, Johnson and Gregory Kelser in Michigan State. Larry Bird carried four guys from Terre Haute, basically, to a 33-0 and in the NCAA Finals. That was extraordinary. And then he rose up again into the NBA and became Magic's arch rival, his chief number one rival. And if not for Magic, Larry would have won five finals, probably with five MVPs. <laughs> but yeah, he was. Larry Bird. Bird was a brilliant passer. Berg was a great rebounder. Berg was an amazing rebounder. He's an incredible scorer, shooter, the whole thing. And when he joined the Celtics, they turned that, they were like a 20-something win team. They went to a 60-something win team, adding a rookie, Larry Bird. When they were both in their primes, Berg was better than Magic. Berg was a better defender than Magic Johnson. Larry Bird made three all-defense teams. Three! He did it mostly roaming, playing center field, stealing, disrupting, Steals. just getting his hands uh -huh. on the ball and passing lanes. 
He did, but he made three all-defensive teams. That's hard to do when you're not exactly mm -hmm. known for your defense. He was tough as nails, not the greatest defender, but still got a lot of steals. And like I said, tough. But at their best, Bird consistently was considered the better player. You were petrified in going up against Larry Bird because at six feet eight, all he needed to do most of the time was get the shot off without it being blocked. Skip, Larry <laughs> finished second in the MVP three straight years before he reeled off three consecutive MVPs. He finished top three in the MVP voting from 81 to 88. Skip, he was dominant. He was the one who won three straight MVPs. Three consecutive MVPs. He ran the NBA. Larry Bird ran the NBA, the alpha, and he was contemporaries with Magic and better in his prime. You, you win three MVPs in a row, and you do have three rings. Larry Bird is like the forgotten man. He was Michael Jordan before there was Michael Jordan. He was like the alpha of the NBA. You were rookie of the year over Magic, so all that adds up to me that, you know, LeBron was right. This man was so cold. He got this one right. And people are like, well, he, he couldn't be doing what he's doing. Luka Doncic. Luka Doncic is averaging 29 points a game, and he can't shoot the ball near as good as Larry. He was a great shooter. Since Larry Bird, there has never been a white NBA no. player, certainly a white no. American no. NBA player, even in no. the same league with Larry Bird. That's how extraordinary no. Larry Bird was. And I'm like, please, don't put me back in there with that white guy. Please, whatever you do. <laughs> It was the first time in my life I was ever scared to be on a uh, go into a basketball game. Yeah, he's he's the great he's the great he's the greatest white ball player ever, Skip. And but with Skip, when people say Luca is the closest thing, they're saying close like Earth is to Mars. That's how close because we've never yeah, seen a, a, white, a, a white guy like Luca. But no, Luca ain't, ain't Larry. No, but he but he's the closest thing no. that we've seen a guy that can score, rebound, and assist the basketball. Bird was the best of all time. Larry Bird was the truth. Who dominated? Larry. That guy dominated. That's why he's one of the greatest players ever played. He, he'll demo he can demo he's, he's demolishing everybody. Larry Bird is the greatest forward of all time. I love Larry Bird, dramatic impact on my life. He's the man who got Jalen Rose a lot of money in Indiana. You know, some of the best games that I played in were, were actually when Larry returned to play against the Celtics. Played him in crunch time in the finals, turned his career around. Three Easter Conference Finals, the only trip that the Pacers have taken to the NBA Finals. Larry Bird was the head coach.
and Dirk, what he did to big men that you can shoot outside and shoot three pointers there. Can you think of anybody well, I, else? I, I would put Bird at the table before Dirk, because um, Magic is the one that made us want to play point guard. We had to watch it, and Bird is the one is the first big man we saw shoot threes. Okay, there'd be there'd be no Dirk if it weren't for Bird. So Bird definitely, I mean, Dirk definitely took it to the next level. I'm not talking about Dirk in any way bad at all. But um, Dirk is not Bird. And if Bird could have shot eight threes a game, we looked at Bird shot like a, a three and a half a game. And so, and, and if Bird came down on the break, even though he wasn't the most athletic, he had to fill the wings and lay it up because they didn't want him going to the corner because spacing wasn't like that. So he didn't have those opportunities. But we saw him shoot threes. We saw him win a three-point contest with his shooting shirt on and hold the finger up. So uh, it, Bird is the one that started that. One of the rule changes that the fans are so interested in, of course, is the three-point play yeah. this year. When I warm up for a game, he doesn't even take his warm-up jacket off, and he just drops triples. What I try to do, just come out and get good rotation on the ball, get the back spin, try to get a good release, and I always focus my eyes. I just shoot any type of shot. I'm not afraid to, to take an off-balance shot or, or a three-point shot. I just get in one of them grooves, and I don't know what makes it go in. Sometimes it releases out my hand before I even think about it. I think it's just the fact that I've shot so many shots a million times. He squares up. Uh, very seldom does he take a bad shot. He would come out and start right underneath the basket. Took the ball, and bam, just every time, until he made every single one. And then he would take a six-inch step back until he made every one, and then another six inch. Larry never stopped backing up. That's the unlimited range that he had. He was the best deep shooter that I've ever seen. He can shoot from deep and had no conscience whatsoever. And that's what made him even better. Larry Bird was a bad boy. Larry Joe Bird. Bird pops out for the quick one. Bird launches one. He got it. Larry hit it. Larry feels it. Finds Larry. There's two. 16 first quarter points for Bird. For the Celtics, it's Larry Bird who has 16. 18 and a foul. Wow. He is nine of nine. Bird cutting for the hoop. Harris rolls to the hoop. Bird. Larry. Hits again. Oh, I mean, he's down there around sock level of uh, Dennis Johnson. Larry Bird for two more, and he has 30 in the first half. Bird quick release over King for two more. Larry looking to open up the third with two. Larry, yes, and a foul. DJ works his way through that Harris screen. Looks like Dennis pulled an ankle as he pulled up, and Bird hits another fall away. Jeff Malone back at the Catledge. Bird stripped him. Harris got the ball. What defense. Beautiful defense. McHale to Bird. Got it. Larry, quick release to open the fourth. Two more. Bird coming around. Finds Harris for two. Gilliam is 6'9", 245 pounds. Bird winds up, buries it. Celtics are leading eight and a half minutes to play first quarter. Bird has four points, now make it six. Directed that he's going to establish that he already has established. Bird with another jump shot. 14 to 11. Bird, oh, what a path to the basket. I mean, Larry saw that. He's capable of 30 or even 40 points. Three-point play by Johnson makes it 16 to 14. And Gilmore came out to set a pick. Did not roll, so Bird banks it home. Rebounding tonight, not giving Phoenix many second shots. Bird for three. He feels it. Boy, is he smoking. Could have created a shot. Be a little tougher to do it. One, but he Bird does it. <laughs> another three for Larry Bird. Oh, boy. Hit two three-point hoops in the first quarter. Larry scored 20 points in the first 12 minutes of play. Bird at 20 in the first quarter. There's his first two in the second quarter. Killer will. Mental.
toughness, clutch, gene. Larry Bird was a bad man. Oh. Bird, 26 and a half. Dig in, aggressive, intensive defense. Bird floating it to McHale. Why don't we give it to Bird? Might as well. He's hit a couple. They do. Larry fires it. 20 yes. 29 points. A three-pointer for Bird. Nance doing a pretty good job of keeping McHale away from the ball. Celtics led by 17 at the half. Bird. Isolation. Larry, baseline. He's got it. Bird goes around his man. Lays it up. Goal pending. Yes. Down to the basket. 102 to 102 with 42 seconds to go. There's a three-second difference between the shot clock and the game clock. Bird, baseline, lays it up. Yes! Count the basket for Larry Bird, and he was fouled. With 17 seconds to go, he ties it at 104. And yet still, watch, Nance. Look at that. Just knocks him out, still maintains his balance. Adams throws it to Eddie Johnson. Fires for three. That's it. Celtics win it by one. Oh, my. This was a tough one. They had to get a 49-point performance from that man right there, Larry Bird. John Carter went the owner of the Mavericks team to get back here at 3 in the morning with Larry Bird. Kevin McHale with his third try. Again, he's short. And Larry Bird with a wonderful tip in, just using fingertip control. Unenviable pass right there. And he paid the price. And that's a good pass from Walton to a cutting Larry Bird. Seasting finally misses, but Bird doesn't. Again, an offensive rebound basket for the Celtics. Bird gets a three-point three, three point try. And count it. And again, there are the Celtics. Larry Bird. Good pass. Larry Bird, excellent pass. Of course, he's one of the leading three-point field goal shooters. As Larry Bird hits it and counters. Count it for Larry Bird. He's two for three. Larry Bird, Larry Bird, and Larry Bird has 32. Ellis goes for the steal and pays and a very big price. Larry Bird with the left hand. Winning can can't get it to drop. Bird with another rebound. Larry Bird, three-pointer. Count it. Two-man game for Boston. Larry Bird only needs one man. 12 seconds. Bird, three-pointer. Count it. Larry Bird pops that one over. Mark Aguirre, Bird with his first basket of the night. Comes almost four minutes deep. Larry Bird. Celtics stick with their original starting five. They get Bird open for the jumper, and he buries it from 15 feet. And again, the Celtics get down quickly off the curve, and he makes it look like a layup for about 23 feet. Shot clock down inside 10 seconds. As Bird puts a move on Aguirre, goes for the hole, and bites it in. Dennis Johnson. Down to Bird. It turns out another basket for Larry Bird, which gives him 14 points. Ellis staying close to him. Bird. Eight minutes, 50 seconds left in the game. Seven minutes, 40 seconds. Bird with a big move to the hole. Boy, I tell you what. <laughs> He's just... He just does it all so well. 30 points now for Bird and a major league move on Dale Ellis. 92 to 90 in this case. Bird with the turnaround over Ellis. And trying to remain uh, the only team that Dallas has never beaten. Bird. You just can't beat the world champion in a shoot like this. Well, they didn't see Bird all by himself, and Bird goes in for the monster dunk. They clear the side for Larry to work a little one on one magic, and he knocks it home. Pulls up on Brokowski again and hits the jump shot. Tonight they're having Bird bring it up a little bit. To break that pressure and you see great pass by Bird. Bird says I've got an open shot and why not? Mr. Heinsohn who we know so well. Here's Bird again from outside. Bird with a great feed to Paris. Into the paint and it causes all kinds of defensive problems for the Celtic big guys. Great point. Here we go! Bang! Good heads up play to get it quickly to Bird as Lawhouse was mesmerized. Here's Bird, he has been on fire. Great slip pass to Kevin McHale. Here's Bird all leather on Robertson. Second chance won't work. And they volleyball it around and Bird is out with a four on three. He's got Shaw left wing, Gamble right wing. Don't forget about old, old Bird, old Larry Legend. We're cooking for mm -hmm. The lead is 21, and Bird's trying to add it, and you can put three more Larry Bird points on the scoreboard. A teardropper. 
5'11 player who hits the outside shot. Much like Bird is doing. Anderson is one of their hopeful players for the future. Oh, what a pass by Bird. Bird winds up three-pointer. Yes, Larry Bird. Celtics leading 11 to 8 on Bird's last three-pointer, so he tries another one. Of course, why not? Eight minutes and 40 seconds left here in the first quarter. Bird back door. The Celtics being able to go low offensively. Another one. They double Bird. That leaves Parrish open over the head pass by Bird. Leans in, leans back, and hits. You know, have to vary what they do offensively and, and defensively. For that Bird time. with a blocked shot. Bird winds up again. Three points. Three for three for LD. Bird again. Three uh, again! Whoa. Four for four for Larry Bird from three-point range. Larry is yet to miss in the game. He still hasn't missed in the game. He has 22 points. Player who's come over from another club. He came from Seattle. Bird, 25 for Bird in the first half. Now Bird steps behind the three-point line, feeds it to Walton, lays it in. Bird's turnaround. What wow. a show! Oh, wow. 27 points. This is Al Frederick Hughes. John Sunvold has also checked into the game. Bird blocks his third shot. Holy smoke. Guy's got 31 points, 10 rebounds, and now three block shots. Bird. Looks like his first shot of the th third quarter. The basket counts. Larry Bird to just roam out there defensively. Through a minefield of Knicks defensively, and here's Bird. And in game one, he wasn't able to get that shot. Wilson. Bird, Paxson, Parrish. Dennis Johnson feeds Bird. Bird gets three from Quinn Tucker. To Bird, short jumper. The jump shot, that's what they'll live with with the Knickerbockers. They want to force the jump shot. Bird. Bird. 18 point lead. Bird answers that with three of his own. That's how packed in the defense has got to be. List of the 260, and he's every bit of that. There's Bird gets free underneath and goes with the left hand. There's Bird, back door. And Mickey Johnson never even knew the ball was coming. They've been running this thing now for about four or five months. But as Mickey Johnson was playing the pick, anticipating Bird coming out for the jump shot, instead Bird went the other way and left Mickey in the dust. Bird through for two. Just create offense, fast break offense, change the rhythm. Oh, nice. Really nice. Oh, Mickey Johnson, find the open man. They all can stick it from about 18 feet. 12 straight by the Nets, and Bird buries a three-pointer. Bird uses the screen. Fine, Harris. You got to double-team the man with the ball. Bird, three more. Outside, two. Bird off to McHale. Bird outside. 31 for Larry. <laughs> One owner saying, you got to play the guy we paid. Bird. DJ, a couple of fakes. Bird's there. Nice. Oh, what a rebound. Larry will take it. Yes. Mickey Johnson backed off, and Bird accommodated. On an Easter Sunday, Larry has got 40. Looks like Lister's going to take McHale, and Bird got free. And Bird again is free. Bird pops out. Only, only Larry Bird does it better. <laughs> he comes in and makes the shot. Oh, Bird again. Dennis Johnson to Larry is unbelievable. Three on two break. Bird seasting the wings. Larry got it. Larry knocks it home top of the key. Larry backs his way in and got through somehow, even though McMillan came in the double. Bird stripped him on the way by. Great, two on one break. Great defensive play by Larry Bird. Great, great defensive play. Bird in traffic. 
Bird is posting up McDaniel, gets the ball, a double from Ellis, Ainge nicely to the basket. Again, Bird and Lucas on a side by themselves. Larry. Greg out high, looking for a cutter, gives it up to Bird for three. Got it! I'm sorry, I mean, get it up by 10. <laughs> Seasting. Bird, the offensive board, got it up, a foul. And count it for Bird. So many times, so many times. And Larry now has 31. Larry again. Bird isolated this time on McDaniel. No one comes in the double. Now Johnson, but he was late. This is a good basketball team, the Seattle club. Bird again, and there's 42. 42. It's in danger. <laughs> If I said you could have LeBron for 10 years or Larry Bird for 10 years. Larry. Let's see if they wind it all the way down. Inside bird low, seconds. bird low. You can double yet. Now you can quickly. First jumper, good. 3.6 seconds left. Larry Bird gives the Boston Celtics a two-point lead. Everybody in this building had to know it was going on. Michael came over to help out. If Scotty does anything, he's got to stay in front of him and make that pass go over the top. He plays him behind. He gets the ball. Your job is over, buddy. Bird for two. Celtics lead with 3.6 seconds. My basketball career is officially over, and I had a blast.